Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to find the eigenvalues of the momentum of a particle in a box, in a one-dimensional box. And in the previous video, we saw that the energy for the various levels, energy levels, can be expressed with this expression, and that the momentum for the same energy levels can be expressed in terms of the energy. Now, what are eigenvalues? Well, eigenvalues are values for whatever the item is that we're look, getting them for, in this case for momentum, that does not depend on direction. But in other words, it's direction independent. So since we found that the, the expectation value for the momentum ended up being equal to zero because we had momentum going to the right, momentum going to the left, and we took the average value, we got zero. At least in this case, we should be able to find the individual values for the momentum going to the right and going to the left, and then we'll compare it to the expectation value. So this is actually fairly simple. All we have to do is plug in what this value is in terms of the level, the mass, the length of the box, and of course, h bar. So when we plug this into here, we get the volume value for the momentum. We get plus or minus the square root of 2m. And instead of e sub n, we're going to write this in there. So we end up with n squared pi squared h bar squared in the numerator, and in the denominator we get 2m times l squared. Now right away we realize that both the 2s and the m's can cancel out. So the 2s are gone, the m's are gone, and everything else underneath the square root sign is uh, squared, so we can simply take it out of the square root sign, so we can say that the momentum for all the energy levels n is going to be equal to plus or minus, and we get, let's see here, n pi h bar over L. And so here we have the two possible values for the momentum. We have the plus value for, let's say, motion to the right, and the negative value for motion to the left, and this is then the actual value of the momentum in either direction. So then what we can say is that P sub n in the plus direction is equal to n pi h bar over L, and P sub n in the negative direction is equal to uh, that would be a negative n pi h bar over L, and so these could then be considered to be the eigenvalues of the momentum or the momentum eigenvalues. Now let's take the average value of those two eigenvalues. So the average, so we could say that the momentum average is going to be the sum of the two, so it's going to be p sub n plus plus p sub n minus divided by two, so now all we have to do is add the two together and see what we get. So this is equal to n pi h bar over L uh, plus the negative n pi h bar over L, the whole thing divided by two. And of course, right, here, right away you realize when you add those two together, since one is positive and one is negative, you end up with zero, which is also going to be the expectation value for the momentum. So you can see that the expectation value by definition is the average momentum, which is going to be zero, and here are the momentum eigenvalues, which gives you the magnitude of the momentum, one going to the right, one going to the left, when it's independent of direction. And so that way you can see both of them. And now you understand also what the momentum is for a particle in a one-dimensional box, either going to the right or going to the left. And that's how it's done.